Buenos Aires, South America. Popular with game show fanatics and fitness freaks the world over for one very good, very big, and very muddy reason. The total wipeout obstacle course. Once again, it's Britain's turn to shine as 20 everyday folk, including a father, a policeman, and a hairdresser, pit their wits against the greatest, most terrifying, and bonkersest obstacle course in the galaxy. Let the games begin. Welcome to Total Wipeout. Now, I've done a survey and discovered that the UK's favourite pastime is golf. And the UK's second favourite pastime is watching other people fall off foam-covered obstacles. That's where this show comes in, because you're about to see 20 competitors do exactly that. 18 holes of golf, lowest score wins. Sorry, no, that's, that's the wrong one. I meant the foam obstacle thing. Like these. The Qualifier, rated PG for parental guidance. The Sweeper, rated 15 for violent scenes. The Dreadmill, rated 18 for strong language. And the grand final, the wipeout zone, borderline illegal. Now, the competitors can't be expected to throw themselves over that lot without having course side assistance from someone who's calm under pressure, trained in first aid, and has an NVQ level three in Mickey taking. Amanda Byron. She's in position over in Argentina with the first of today's competitors. with Becca from York at the top of the qualifier. So Becca, <laughs> what is the edge then that you have over everybody else in this competition today? I think it's my burpees. I'm very good at my burpees. That's the best burpee I've ever seen in my whole entire life. The voice of an angel. So Burpee Becker's first obstacle today is the Walk of Shame, back for its second out. Let's see if 27-year-old marketing manager Becker can dance across. Oh, not a great start. Still at least her eyes are dry. Up onto the pontoon now for the first real obstacle. Yeah, it's a lot of noise. Burpee Becker's got a personal trainer in preparation for Total Wipeout. The screaming's all natural. <laughs> Thank you, walk of shame. That wasn't so much a walk of shame as a wobble, a stumble and dunk of disgrace. Burpee Becker hasn't finished her walk of shame yet, so it's up onto the pontoon for the next set of steps. I'm going to get the walk of shame! Ah, raw ambition from Becca there. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> she did make a second step. That's a 100% improvement on a previous attempt. <laughs> oh my god! It's so cold! I encourage you to get a move on. Keep going, Becca. Don't give up. Burpee Becker's onto the sucker punch in no time at all, if you're a snail. She's looking confident. Ooh. You know, actually, she's doing pretty well. I think that was one to the ribs. Come on, Becker. Nope, it was the hip. My mistake. Oh, this stinks! Hold on, that line was not in Titanic. Anyway, on to the big balls. Who was that? Certainly wasn't Burpee Becker. I think exhaustion might be setting in. When they said. Yeah, she's just gibbering to herself now. Oh, oh dear. Who would have predicted that? Burpee Becker can't wait to test out those goggles again. Perhaps she's looking for loose change on the bottom of the pool. The only way she's taking money home today, possibly. A swim to the ladder, and then up that ladder and onto the final obstacle. Good job she wore waterproof nail varnish. Yeah, you guessed it. It's back again. The leap of George Mike. Sorry, Faith. Anyway, swing from there onto that. It's simple. Here goes Burpee Becker. Yeah, the rope isn't normally the difficult bit. This should be a run. 
Here we go, and then the launch. Good trajectory. Bad everything else. Yeah, well, it hasn't gone brilliantly for Burpy Becker, but she climbs under the finishing podium in a time of 4 minutes 28. Yeah! Becky will be hoping for some very slow competitors to come. I am at the start of the qualifier now with Rob. Rob, do you think you have what it takes to get across that course physically? I've got a tiger within us. I think that's going to come out today. Oh, show me your tiger. <laughs> ah, that course is going to be absolutely petrifying. <laughs> that was a nerve. <laughs> Let's hope Rob can harness the well-documented wobbly podium hopping abilities of the Tiger. No, he can't. <laughs> 27-year-old recruitment consultant Rob is a qualified diver. <laughs> which is handy. Oh, brilliant. And a very damp Rob readies himself for the sucker punch now. Look at his face. What's wrong with his face? Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Oh. Go stop! <laughs> well, a great effort from Rob the Tiger there, and eight lives still left intact, which leaves him four spare for the big balls and three for the leap of faith. Into the big balls now. Rob the Tiger's brought most of the mud pit with him. Bless you. Can he pounce across the balls? No, that was terrible. Rob the Tiger down to seven lives now. He does manage to stay upright. When it comes to the big balls, you've got to be thankful for small mercies. Swimming, not an issue for Rob the Tiger. Come on, Rob. Release that tiger. Seriously, Rob, if you have got a tiger, you've got to release it. Here we go. The leap of faith. Oh, so three lives down, six to go. And Rob the Tiger finishes in a respectable 2 minutes 59. Next to tackle the qualifier is 18-year-old part-time hairdresser Amy from Portsmouth. Sorry, Amy, they really should get that turntable fixed. I'm a ninja in disguise. Hurry up! That sounded like fabric ripping. And Amy sets off. OK, little wardrobe malfunction to get things started, and it's on to the walk of shame. And then off again. So, a swim to the pontoon for another attempt. The shorts really aren't helping. Come on, Amy. Oh, oh she's hanging on in there. Is that her or the shorts making that noise? Oh, this is incredible technique. Slow, but, but incredible. Something needs an oil. Just two steps to go, plus the rest of the qualifier. Huh? This is brilliant. Well, she's not letting go. I'm a true gentleman, so I'm not looking. <laughs> Come on, Amy! You can do this! You're nearly there! Come on! Oh. Can anyone walk the walk of shame? It's time to call in the cavalry. This is Natasha, a stud farm manager from Essex. How did she do that? So, Natasha, will you be galloping your way around that course today? I will be galloping and jumping as much and as fast as possible. I'm going to giddy up, giddy up, giddy up and go! Just look at Natasha go. And a strong gallop to the walk of shame. Surely Natasha's thoroughbred fetlocks will see her across here. I think she needs stirrups to get across there. Obviously trained to ride English style. OK, this could take a while. Anyway, listen, I've got the most amazing bit of showbiz gossip to tell you. You won't believe it. Oh, she's fallen. <laughs> we rejoin Natasha in the mud bath. 
sorry, sucker punch. Flying over canal turn and into the home straight now. Yeah, they're going slightly soft there. Gallop reduced to a trot now, but I think Mustang Tasha has a lot left in her. Not as much as she's got on her, but a lot left in her. Come on, Tasha. There's money riding on this. There's punters. She can jump all the way across these. I'm sure she can. She's going to clear it. Okay. I'm sure she can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm less sure now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mustang Tasha did for a brief moment actually land on the first ball. No one's done that yet. Let's see if the next contestant can. This is 34-year-old receptionist Emma. Like Mustang Tasha, she's carrying her own body weight in Argentinian mud slime. <laughs> Emma loves assault courses. She's been practicing at her local park. She's also currently reading Fern Britton's autobiography. I don't know why that's relevant. I just I had it written down. I wanted to tell you. I shared it. OK. Here we go. I'm gonna win it for the girls. Watch them learn, boys. You gotta crush them both. Okay, Emma, I'm a boy. I'm watching, ready to learn. Shoot. Yeah, there, there's the crash, and there's the burn. Those big balls can really chafe. <laughs> Let's see it again so us boys can do some more in depth learning. Okay, picking up tips. Yeah, I feel like I've learned something today. Right, no mucking about. This is 30-year-old Sean from Guildford, and he's a police constable. So, PC Sean, you don't seem to be phased by this at all. Is this how you are with the robbers? Absolutely. Criminals of South London, petrified. You have a petrified-looking face that you give them. I do, I do. It's just a little bit camp, though, sometimes. Yeah, neither camp nor scary. Just a bit weird. It's time to arrest this course and send it down for 20 years. Yeah, Sean, you arrest this course. That makes sense. He's in the water. He's up, he's out. The walk of shame is usually reserved for Sean's uh, clients, but let's see how he likes it, shall we? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, <laughs> well, pretty entertaining. He'll be pleased I played that. A second chance for PC Sean to reassert his authority on this course now. And, oh well. Will the long arm of the law feel the long arm of the sucker punch? You're not allowed to do this, sure. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Several times, it would seem. Yeah. Come on now, PC Sean. Show the balls what policemen are made of. Aren't policemen bouncy? <laughs> Dunked upside down and then backwards into cold water. Memories of his induction into the Met come flooding back. With just a leap of faith to go, this is looking like a great time from PC Sean. So he swings. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> a great time though, two minutes and four seconds. So let's take a first look at the leaderboard. And PC Sean is in the lead with Rob the Tiger and Burpee Becker in second and third. Amy and her magic shorts are in fourth. Emma and Mustang Tasha reclining in fifth and sixth. Let's crack on with the next contestant. Do you think that you're going to ride the victory wave here today, Jem? Yeah, I think I might surf down that first bit and uh, try not to fall over and smack my head. Well, listen, you go get him, dude. Come on! So, surfer Jem has promised us she won't fall over and hit her head. Uh, hang on. Let's see that again. Did, did she... Did, is that... I can confirm, Jem has fallen over and hit her head. Let's see how she fares on the walk of shame. Surfer Gem should be used to riding the crest of wobbly things, so she should be... <laughs> Good swimmer, though. That's a plus. 
onto the sucker punch, and Surfer Gem should be used to taking a tumble. Yep, right on cue. Uh, right in the kisser. So a surfer taking on the qualifier. What have we learnt? <coughs> Nothing. I'm joined now at the top of the qualifier by Paul, who is a postman. So, Paul, do you by any chance have a little red van and, uh, and a black and white cat? I actually do, actually. <laughs> yes, I have a black and white cat called Pepper, and I actually drive a little red van. <laughs> Fantastic! So, Postman Paul does have a black and white cat and a red van. Let's see how many more Postman clichés I can deliver. Oh, that was easy. My name's Paul. Not always deliver the goods. Come on! Strictly speaking, that was the same as mine, but it still counts. First class slide down the ramp. Heck you But can Paul stamp his authority on the walk of shame? <laughs> oh. Oh. Paul should have handled those with more care. Aye, right, thank you. Let's stop that game now. Paul actually, actually finished the qualifier in a very respectable 2 minutes 12 seconds. Sorry about all the puns. I've finished that now. OK, let's see if today's next competitor can post a good time. I promise you, no more clichés. That, that, that is it. Next is Benny Hill, farmer. Sorry, next is Benny Hill, farmer. Benny, what would you do if you won the money today on Total Wipeout? Yeah, well, I suppose I might buy a new boil for the farm, you know. The old one's getting out of itself. <laughs> Not performing the best. <laughs> 21-year-old farmer Benny is from Enniskillen and wants a new bull for his farm. So will he charge through the course like a bull or stumble like a newborn calf? Newborn calf it is. Look at that walk. Could be called the Harvest Shuffle, maybe. It could catch up now. Yeah, that, that new bull seems less likely right now. Onto the sucker punch, and will this farmer get a closer look at some Argentinian slurry? He's on. He's still on. He's still on. And he makes it across. Yes. Get out the bull catalogue, Benny. This is going well. Oh, shame. Yeah, put the catalogue down again, Benny. Think of the red landing pad as a red rag, bull boy Benny. Ole! Oh. Despite the missed landing, bull boy Benny finishes in a raging time of 2 minutes 27. Oh. Woo! Not bad for a farmer, eh? Oh. I know what tasted me anyway. You what? I tasted me. <laughs> tough, tough going. So what are you thinking when you went across the sucker punch? Because, man, you were really good across that thing. Well, I, we used to get an odd slap, so I kind of dodged them. <laughs> so, can you guess what Spencer here does for a living? No, you can't, because he's a scrutiny officer. A job no one's ever heard of. And six foot four, left hand, the ginger head of Welsh. Wales, this is for you! Spencer says his greatest ever achievement was winning an egg and spoon race in 1977. He later admitted he'd only won because he replaced the egg with the potato. But I promise not to share that. It looks like that'll remain Spencer's greatest achievement for some time to come. Yeah, hang on to that story. Next is 35-year-old street dance teacher Kim. It is for all the mums out there. If you try and you add an oomph at the end, you will triumph. Yeah, but, but not in a spelling test. So let's join Kim at the sucker punch. Oh. oh, she's taking a few hits. Oh, well, she did try. But it was a sucker punch that added the oomph right in the thigh. What is a street dance teacher, anyway? Yeah, does anyone know a good method for getting mud out of your eyes? No, that's not it, clearly. This little pit of Argentinian muck is proving to be quite a a tourist attraction for today's total wipeout competitors. In fact, if it gets any more visitors, I'm setting up an ice cream van next door. 
What we need is a fit, young and nimble person to take on the challenge. Oh, that's a coincidence. Here's one now. 22-year-old Kat is a Cardiff rugby girl and physiotherapy student. I don't need to say any more about that. And a textbook face plant there from Cat. In you go, spectacular stuff. <laughs> this is Linda, a 58 year old boxing housewife from Great Doddington, which makes her the hardest housewife in Great Doddington. Will somebody fix that turntable? Left hook, right hook, uppercut. I'm going to box my way out of this course. Nobody's going to knock me out. It's in the eyes, I'm terrified. Fighting talk there, the sucker punch won't like that. So let's see if left hook Linda can put her money where her mouth is. No, she just got punched where her mouth is. <laughs> left hook, right hook, nobody's gonna knock me out. Linda there, reminding us why it's never a good thing to get carried away with your shout-out at the top of the course. Now, the BBC asked if I'd like to go to Argentina to do a report. I said, look, that's going to be really difficult for me. I've got a young family, I've got commitments. If you value me at all as a presenter, as a human being, as a friend, please don't make me go. So here's my report from Argentina. I'm here on a deserted Total Wipeout course. Well, I say deserted. There are 20 Bulgarian contestants over there waiting for me to finish this link. Bogdan, quiet. <coughs> this is where Total Wipeout contestants do their shout out. Here's mine. Help! Here are my do's and don'ts for a successful shout out. Hi, I'm Super Jet, and I'm here today. Don't dance if you can't dance. I've got the book, yeah. I've got the book, yeah. Do at least try to be intelligent. Hey, hey, I'm the oldest swinger in town. Don't watch me fly round this course. Whoop. Don't try poetry. Don't forget a wipeout rhyme is an outright crime. Do remember, your kids will be watching. Look what Mummy's doing! Don't, and I really mean, don't overpromise. I am the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be! Well, those are my do's and don'ts. Now it's time for me to have a go at the qualifier. Geronimo! Oh, oh, oh. And... Cut. So, back to the qualifier. With seven runs to go, let's see if the remaining contestants have heeded that advice. My name is B. I will not fail. Like my name, I've got a stick in my tail. Oh, for crying out loud. 46-year-old painter decorator B obviously didn't hear a word of what I've just been talking about. Oh, B is from a village called Sheepwash. Yeah, that really is a place, apparently. Although she can't actually sting like a bee, she can run seven miles and fit 20 marshmallows in her mouth. Useful. Oh, oh. Never mind marshmallows. I think she tried to fit an entire big red ball in her mouth there. Sweet bees on, isn't it? 28-year-old Alex is a systems analyst. He's analysed our big red balls and come up with a system. Ah, yes, Alex said he was going to jump off the first big red ball and catapult himself to the second, and so on and so forth. Well, he's cleared the first ball and landed on the second. <gasps> and now the third. Come on, Alex! And onto the fourth, this is amazing! His system works! That is, that is genius! That is genius! And that's madness. Yeah, they do say there's a thin line between the two. Genius, madness. And our king of the balls, Alex, is going for it anyway without a rope! How was he going to swing? <laughs> to be fair, I've seen people do a lot worse with the rope. 
Our hero, Alex, finishes in a fantastic 2 minutes 13. Ah, Woo! systems analyse that. <sighs> and that. Woo! Yeah, that too. Oh, and Postman Paul has just pipped King of the Balls Alex by one second with Ball Boy Benny in third. PC Sean slips down into fifth. Surfer Gem looking precarious in ninth and just hanging in there by the skin of her goggles, it's Burpee Becker. So, 18-year-old Sammy from Lanark used to think she was a werewolf. <laughs> I'll call her Barking Sammy, I think. Oh dear. That's got to hurt. I guess so. Come on, Sammy. Dignity. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> She's not. <laughs> Come on, Sammy. What's needed here is a sense of urgency. I'm sure it's fun, but that's more like it. Barking Sammy's just realised that the next obstacle is the sucker punch. Here we go. Come on, Sammy. Oh, that really was a howler. Come on, Sammy. Don't worry, Sammy, that's not the next obstacle. It's just a rope. Maybe you should be afraid of what's coming next, though. Yes, it's the Big Balls. Who is that? Keeps doing what? Oh, my goodness! <laughs> yeah, a horror of a different kind there. Sammy, that back technique, yeah, that one, that's not working. You need to, you know, fast. You're still not actually moving anywhere. So, to the leap of faith. Ooh, good technique so far, this is looking good. Perfect! Apart from one tiny error. You went the wrong way on those stairs. Can anyone smell burning? Barking Sammy finishes in four minutes and seven seconds. Will that be good enough to get into the top 12? As you know by now, total wipeout competitors are carefully selected from the cream of British sporting talent. The country's athletic elite with model physiques and unbreakable spirits. I'm joking, of course. Sometimes it's hard to tell the contestants and the big red balls apart. But now and again, we do get people on the show who actually are quite sporty and fit, like the next three. First, it's John, who's broken three world records for rowing indoors. I'm going to play this course like a drum kit from hell! Woo! I don't understand that. And he might have just broken something else as well. Then there's ex-semi-professional footballer Chris. Who did that? This is how it's supposed to be done. Let's get it on. And that's a semi-successful start. And our sporting trio is completed by 51-year-old Mark, an athlete in Ironman competitions. I am an Iron Man. Here I come. Ah, that's better. Go on, Iron Man Mark. Go, go, go! Uh. Oh, get out, get out, Iron Rusts! Let's catch up with semi-pro Chris. Ooh. Wow, some fancy footwork from the former semi-pro footballer. Now to record-breaking rowing John. Oh, well, look at that. He made that look so easy. Oh, yes! Iron Man Mark now. You see, looks like those joints are seizing up. Warned you. Let's see if semi-pro Chris can keep you uppy with these big balls. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, it's... Oh! Oh, 
Oh, this looks so good. He really looks as though he's going to do it like no one's ever crossed before. And then it all goes wrong at the end. Had that worked, it would have been... Let's not think of what it would have been. Surely our sucker punch gloves can't damage pure iron. Yes. Yes, they can. I'm going to the Throwing John on the balls now. Ooh, ooh, he's on to the second. Is he going to do it? <gasps> the third. Jonathan is a genius. Oh, come on, come on, John. Come oh. on. Oh, no, another near miss. Oh, Jonathan. So close. I really thought, and then... Okay, time for a battle. Rubber versus iron. Rubber wins. Semi-pro Chris takes aim. And sails over the target. Now for our record breaker. More like a leg breaker. Come on, Iron Man Mark, this is your chance to make up time. You could win this. You really could. If you can undo the rope. The final whistle blows on Chris, and his amazing time of 1.37 is the fastest today. Wow. Rowing John finishes just 10 seconds behind him, and Iron Man Mark... Well, he managed to untie the rope. I'm trying to look for the positives here. Yeah, they're a bit thin on the ground, but... And I had such high hopes for Iron Man Mark Elliott. I can't help feeling he's tainted the Elliott family name a bit with that performance. If only there was another Elliott family member competing today, a younger, fitter Elliott who could put the pride back into his family name. So let's see who our next competitor is. Oh look, it's Mark's son, Johnny Elliott. Wow, it's almost as if that was planned. So here he is, son of Iron Man. It's Iron Boy Johnny. Whoa, that was amazing. Oh, now this looks promising. <laughs> oh, like father, like son. Come on now. If John is going to avenge his father's defeat, he'll need to be quicker than Chris's <laughs> 1 minute 37. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. You can do this. The sucker punch next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he looks like a Malteser. That'll help. That'll help. Right, the balls. Come on. Let's see what happens when Iron Boy meets rubber. You have to get there. It's up the ramp and up there. Uh, there they are. Yeah. Uh, oh. Wow. Uh, so that was a somersault, two twists, and about three weeks till the bruising goes down, I reckon. So, while Iron Boy Johnny hasn't been as quick as semi-pro Chris, he's still in with a chance of beating Rowing John. Oh! No, not anymore! Still, he's beaten his dad by eight seconds. At long last, the Iron Boy becomes... an Iron Man. Let's take a final look at the leaderboard. And semi-pro Chris is in top spot with Rowan John and Postman Paul in second and third. Alex and newly crowned Iron Man Johnny in joint fourth. Cat is top girl in eighth. And Rob the Tiger just makes it through in twelfth place. So there we are, 20 competitors, four big balls, two members of the same family and one ex-werewolf. And nobody's ever said that before. Ever. Sadly, though, it is time to say goodbye to eight of them. Try not to get emotional. Got your love, boys. You gotta crush them both. I'm all right. No! I try not to fall over and smack my head. <laughs> Back in the corner, where they go? <laughs> Left hook, right hook. Nobody's gonna knock me out. Not my name. I'm gonna dig in my tail. Hey, up! <laughs> it's time for the sweeper. Armed with 10,000 pesos and a list of instructions, Eduardo was sent out to create the ultimate obstacle, the decapitator. But he forgot all that, and instead he brought back 12 empty coconut sacks. Don't know what he did with the coconuts.
You know how this works by now. Our contestants jump over the big red thing until at least six other people have fallen off. Then they're through to the next round. To spice things up a bit, they'll stand in a sack with a tarantula in it. Now, I'm joking. We wouldn't dream of hurting any spiders. Contestants, on the other hand, on podiums one and two, it's Iron Boy Johnny <laughs> and Umphy Kim. We're outnumbered, so I'm doing it for the girls. On three and four, rowing John and King of the Balls, Alex. You've watched me beat those big red balls now, look. Watch me. <laughs> Can we do that one again? Yes, I got the gist. On podiums five, six and seven, it's semi-pro Chris, Iron Man Mark and Spencer. Watch me fly, this ginger's gonna go nuts. Howling mad Spencer going right off the crazy scale there. On podiums 8, 9 and 10 are Rob the Tiger with the balance of a mountain leopard. PC Sean. This cop is not going to drop. And Cat. Boys, you better watch out because I'm going to sack it to you. Clever. Sack. That's what they're in. Yeah. On 11, it's Postman Paul. This postage sack's got special delivery straight through to the next round. I thought we'd stop doing that. And finally, on podium 12, it's Bull Boy Benny. I would have saved this up for the Irish. What? What did he say? Did anyone get that? Anyone? What? Ah, oh, it is a glorious day. The sun is shining. It's time for a refreshing dip. Not me, silly. That lot. It's the sweeper. Are you all ready? Yeah. Oh, there's no time like the present. Three, two, one. Oh. I'm not ready. Someone's not ready. Oh, guess it was Umphy Kim. Sounded more like a man, though. Ah, there, it was Howlin' Mad Spencer. Umphy Kim manages to fall off a flat, stationary platform. Managed to jump here, just didn't manage to stay balanced. So, a bit sad to be out now, but I'm really pleased that I just got a chance to get up there and have a go at it. Yeah, a very quick go at it, but a go. <gasps> Howling Mad Spencer, meanwhile, displays some of the finest windmilling I've seen this series. It is absolutely terrifying. They're just so high up and it comes at you so fast. And it's about to get even higher and even faster for the remaining ten competitors. Make that nine competitors. Iron Boy Johnny's gone. Sorry, eight. The sweeper is mowing them down today. Iron Boy Johnny gets a little overzealous and almost clears the sweeper and his podium. I just completely messed it up. Just completely jumped forward and missed the podium, so couldn't help it, but oh well. And look at this. King of the Balls Alex is out of the game. Just fell in. He caught me. I'm not too good at jumping. I've got short legs, so it's a bit hard for me. Eight left standing, but only six can go through. Next two to fall are out, and that bar is getting higher and faster. So, those left standing are Rowing John, Semi-Pro Chris, Iron Man Mark, Rob the Tiger, PC Sean... Oh, man down! And another! The sweeper thinks nothing of assaulting a police officer and takes Sean's legs clean out from under him. So close! So close. That's so hard. It's unbelievable. And look, Kat's our last female competitor. She's gone too. Lovely dismount, though. It's just this red blur coming towards you, and if someone else in front of you drops, you'd be like, oh, no. Absolutely gutted beyond words. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised she's gutted. She's just missed out on a place in the next round. So we have our six, and they're now just playing for pride. Ooh, ball boy Benny's down, but he's hanging on like a... Bull on a foam podium. The Iron Man's on all fours. Rob the Tiger's gone. I thought cats hated water. Oh, and Benny's down again. He has to get to his feet before the sweeper comes round again. Oh. Stripped him of his sack. Bull boy Benny's got nothing left to give the sweeper. But he's already safely through to the next round, so it's down to four. Are you not entertained? Him? Rowing John, semi-pro Chris, and Iron Man Mark, who will be last man standing. The sweeper is moving really quite fast. They're very fast. Oh, Iron's no match for padded foam, and Iron Man Mark goes out in fourth place. Ouch. So we're down to just three. Oh, 
Rowing John takes third. He'll be pleased to know he's broken another record. Highest red foam bar jumped by a man called John standing in a sack in Buenos Aires. I'm not sure that's official yet, but it's his when it is. So it's between Postman Paul and semi-pro Chris. And Postman Paul just gets caught by the sweeper, which means semi-pro Chris takes the top spot. So Postman Paul gets caught out at the end, but there's no shame in taking second place on the sweeper. Just a really strong feeling of frustration. And semi-pro Chris is today's last man standing. Come on! Yeah, the sweeper hates a bragger. Two rounds down, two to go. Just six competitors remain, and the next round will halve that to three. In case you struggle with the maths there. Now, normally, if you're going on a running machine, you might wear a pair of shorts, maybe even leg warmers and sweatpants. I wouldn't. You might. However, on our total wipeout running machines, for some reason, the competitors all opt to wear knee pads, shoulder protectors and a crash helmet. Why would that be? See if you can spot a clue in this. This is the third outing for the treadmill, but this week it comes with a new twist. The door jam. The contestants run for their lives on two industrial-sized treadmills through a series of doors. The further they get, the faster it goes, but they must avoid being knocked over or falling into the pool of despair. Whoever makes it the furthest in each heat bags a place in the White House. Got that? Simple stuff. Here's a reminder of exactly who the Dreadies are. This is how it's supposed to be done. He was the fastest qualifier and last man standing. That's what I'm talking about. It's semi-pro Chris. Next up, it's rowing John. I'm going to play this course like a drum kit from hell. He's got the largest guns in Cardiff. He ain't no pussycat. It's Rob the Tiger. Oh, Our fourth dready is a nightmare in the kitchen. It's Iron Man Mark. My name's Paul. He's got more cliches than a carry-on film. You're always delivered a good. It's Postman Paul. Come on! And last of all. I'm gonna sweep this up for the Irish. He needs a bull for his farm. It's Bull Boy Benny. So, to decide who's up against who, Eduardo's drawn the names from his hat in the presence of an independent adjudicator, his brother, who's also called Eduardo. So, let's see which lucky contestants have been drawn to go first. Heat 1, semi-pro Chris versus rowing John. Well, he's a big contender, but I think I'm up to it, and um, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. Chris has got to be the favourite, he's the fastest qualifier, last man standing. If that's not favourite, I don't know what is. The treadmill. Are you ready, Chris and Jonathan? Saving the breath, they're gonna need it. Three, two, one! So this is it, our first look at the door jam. When the klaxon sounds, these guys can start racing through those doors. There it is. Oh, semi-pro Chris has stumbled already. He's down, but hanging on to the door. Oh, he's taking it with him. He's gone. What a dramatic start to the treadmill. Semi-pro Chris is fully wet and out of total wipeout. But Rowing John doesn't know that. He's just focused on the doors ahead of him. Poor Chris. But he knows he can't hold on to these obstacles. And Rowing John has reached the end. But look, he's just realised he'd won. Incredible stuff. So let's have another look at this. Chris falters at the very start. Then hanging on to the obstacle demolishes it. Which of course means John's won, and it looks like he's been on the wine gums again. What you were the man to beat? What went wrong? What can I say? Um, I tried my best. Better man won. Put my hands up to him, you know. So to the second heat. It's Iron Man Mark versus Rob the Tiger. I've drawn Rob, and I'm really pleased to have drawn Rob because an Iron Man's going to win any day. If Mark's the Iron Man, then, uh, then I think I'm the pub man, which is a, a nice even match. OK, Iron versus pub, which will prevail and make it through to the wipeout zone. Here we go. 
lifting the doors and... Oh, Iron Man Mark's down already. Oh, I think he's done himself an injury. But Rob doesn't know that yet. He's just focusing on the doors ahead of him. Poor Iron Man Mark. Disappointed with that. The loss and the injury. Rob slipped, but it won't matter because he's already won. Yeah, it turns out this obstacle's quite dangerous. If you look very closely there, you can just see Rob celebrating. Yeah, just a bit. Reckon he's happy. The Dreadmill really living up to its name. Dreading and milling. Two heats, two dramatic exits. To avoid any more, Amanda's had words with the last two competitors. Unfortunately, those words included, please fall over, and I find it funny. So who will fill the last vacancy in today's wipeout zone? Final heat. Postman Paul versus Bull Boy Benny. Very happy, Paul Benny. So I feel that I can um, swipe it from him. <laughs> a little bit hard, sir. He seems to be a fed off kind of a buck. <laughs> postman, you know, he used to be on his feet. <laughs> oh dear. It's the postman versus the farmer. Three, two, one. Well, fingers crossed that no one hurts themselves this time and that it lasts longer than five seconds. Good luck. The difficult stuff starts now. Ooh. Both sprinting to charge through door one, almost matching each other stride for stride now. Postman Paul knocking at door two. No dogs, carry on. Who will make it through door three first? Paul is slowing, but Bull Boy Benny is charging through. And Benny's won. He is through to the wipeout zone. While Postman Paul is just wet through. Wicked! You were so close. What happened in the end? Oh, I just went too far. I couldn't get in the ribbon. Better man won. You've given a first class performance all day today, Paul. Hard luck. Go join the others. So, well done to Bull Boy Benny, Rob the Tiger and Rowing John. Partly for getting through to the Wipeout Zone final, mostly for managing not to destroy any of the obstacles. Thank you. Now, before we head on into the Wipeout Zone, let's see how much this means to our three finalists. It usually means quite a lot. I am so surprised to be in the final of Total Wipeout. I've shocked myself a lot. I didn't think I'd be here. It's like I'm in dreamland. It's the only way I can describe it. I really, really want to beat Jonathan. I just really want to win, and for the first time in the whole competition, I actually think I can win. I'll absolutely pull everything out of the bag. I owe it to myself, and I owe it to my family. I would like to win more than anything tonight. £10,000 is a lot of money for me. I'd buy a new bull for the farm and buy the girlfriend an engagement ring. <laughs> Jonathan really brings out the competitive streak in me. He's had a game plan from the start. He has studied all of the course in absolute detail. He done a degree in it. Benny, he's, he's hilarious. We can't always understand what he's saying. We sometimes need subtitles. It's hard to be thumping a bit. Hopefully go home with big pockets. <laughs> Once the whistle blows, as the sun sets, it'll be the realisation that, uh, yeah, you really have got to do this now. I'm really pumped up for this now. Jonathan should definitely watch his back, because I'm going to beat him into the ground. I'm going to do it tonight. Just watch me. <laughs> the wipeout zone is upon us. It's the zenith, the peak, the pinnacle, the apex. The pointy bit at the top where the visitor's centre might be. Look, it's a really important part of the show. For three people tonight, it's a dream come true and a well-earned stab at that £10,000 prize. But how will they complete this gargantuan test of skill? Well, by following my handy guide to how to complete the wipeout zone. Killer surf, go down. The barrel run, jump over. The monkey bars, don't fall off. The spinner, don't fall off. The brusher, don't fall off. The launch pads, don't fall off. And finally, press the button. It's the wipeout zone, and Rob is the first contestant tonight. We've seen glimpses of Rob the Tiger's inner tiger all day, but now it's time the tiger roared. This is for all the underdogs out there. Maybe meant under cats. 
He's in. The clock is ticking as Rob the Tiger makes his way to the barrel run. Onto the beam. Bad news for Rob. The price of oil has risen since last series, so those barrels are now filled with gravel. Not really. Oh, no! Oh, ah! He's really getting into trouble. This is not helping his time at all. Oh, God! Oh. This is the first obstacle in the wipeout zone. Come on, Rob! I think he's hit every single barrel, or they've hit him. Come on, Rob! Still, Rob the Tiger makes it onto the monkey bars. One big swing, and he drops. Tiger's supposed to be great climbers. Rob just lost his grip there. He's going to have to make his way up the ladder and try again. This has got to hurt now. I think they're supporting Rob tonight? Well, he's up the ladder and straight on to the spinner. He is on. Now he's looking to make up for lost time. He's got to jump off. He chooses not to do so first time around. He's going to go for it on the second, is he? Yes, he's left. Oh, no, he's in. Rob the Tiger's luck has just run out. He landed well, but was just travelling too fast. Didn't stand a chance on that slippery pontoon. Well, with just the brusher and launch pads to go, this could still be a winning time from Rob the Tiger, so come on. Make a run for it, and he slips again. How's he carrying on? Exhaustion has got to be taking its toll now on Rob. Up onto the final obstacle, the launch pads. They're all that stand between Rob the Tiger and a warm hotel bed. Or maybe a warm hospital bed, either way. The launch pads, then. Come on. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! How must that feel now? What will it take to carry on? Whatever it is, he's got it because he's doing it. Facing the launch pads now for the second time. Come on, Rob. Yes, that's a better landing. The second launch pad. Come on. Oh, no! He's holding on, he's holding on. One more leap now and he's done it. It'll be over for him. He'll be glad. He's made it. Rob the Tiger sets the time to beat. <laughs> well, the wipeout zone is tough and Rob the Tiger showed just what can go wrong on every obstacle. But he carried on. Over to Amanda to give him his time. First, you don't succeed. Well, just try, try again. I don't know of any people who will... Fall off every single thing that you could fall off. I can tell you now, you did fall off everything, but based on that fact, you still did a pretty respectable time. It was four minutes and 47 seconds. Yours is definitely the time to beat. And up next, it's Benny. So it's time for Bull Boy Benny. He has no idea how Rob the Tiger got on. There's no turning back now. Ah! Well, if Benny's going to stand a chance of winning, he'll need a different approach to his rival, Bob. Like not falling off every obstacle. Don't fall off. Lovely sportsmanship from Rob the Tiger there. But Benny's looking stronger on these barrels. A few stumbles, but he's carrying on. Look at him, stopping those barrels. A bull of a man. Ooh. Well, he's made it. This is where I fell off. Yeah. Yeah, one of the places, Rob. One of the places. You can say that about anywhere on the course. Benny now not only facing torrents of water and gravity, but also bad vibes from Rob. Soldiering on, though. He's made it across. And on to the spinner, but it's getting off. That's the hard part. He's done it. He's off. He's making this look easy now. Oh, no, but the brush has got him. One slip was all it took. Ben is off. Rob will have enjoyed that. So it's back up the ladder to attempt the launch pads. Come on, Benny. First one. Sideways landing. Nice. Second launch pad now. Ah, can he hang on? Can he hang on? 
Yes, yes, he's up. One final leap and Ben is finished. Yes, he's there. Yes! Come on! A very strong run from Bull Boy Benny with only one slip up on the brusher. Much better run than Rob's and it's up to Amanda now to tell Rob what he must already know. Yeah. Benny, my farming boy, you little dark horse you. How was that for you? Oh, tough. <laughs> very tough. Slippy. Rob, Benny was faster than you. Oh. All right, man. Hey, well oh, done. yes! Rob, Benny, you know what this means! Only one person away from 10,000! Jonathan is up next. So, it rests with rowing John, whose broken records now is out to break Benny's heart. Rowan John's going to have to be super slick if he's going to beat Benny. No, certainly slicker than that. Come on. Benny, never a good thing when the barrels are there before you. Ooh, but John's picking up the pace now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He stormed up that ramp. And looking very confident across the monkey bars despite all that water. This is great stuff from John. The spinner. Straight on. But it's leaving where you lose. Straight off and an amazing landing. On his feet. Onto the brusher. Oh, he's been brushed in. And at exactly the same point as Benny went in. This is going to be a close run contest between these two. Oh, this is getting very tight indeed. John can't afford to make another mistake. He's made it up the ladder, just the launch pads to go. If he finishes these clear, he could win. He's onto the first one. Everything hanging on his next moves now. Everything. If he makes it onto this... Oh, no! No, he's back on. If he makes this final leap, he will win. If he goes in, he will not. He's made it. He's made it an amazing time. Sub two minutes, 1.57. What a run from John. Some incredible moments mixed in with a couple of little mistakes and now it's over to Amanda to announce the winner. You've both been extremely brilliant all day. You have been a world record breaker, Jonathan. And I can tell you tonight, you have another title under your belt because you no, have won no. the title of Token Wave Champion! Oh my goodness me! Oh, no. oh. So congratulations to Jonathan Goodall from Cardiff, who's this week's Total Wipeout Champion. Together with Rob the Tiger and Bull Boy Benny, he'll be going forward into our series final, which is shaping up to be the greatest. <laughs> Most gravity-defying quest of all time. Where the champion of champions will be crowned. <laughs> so, from Amanda and me, goodbye.